my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. And if you watch my Sunday videos and you're like, hey, she's wearing the same thing as she did on her Sunday videos, that's because I'm doing two video filming today and laundry that I've been hardcore avoiding. And I'm lazy, so that's just, just pretend that I'm not. So as always, I wanted to plan my monthly TBR. I find it really helpful to know what my plans are, what I'm going through, and make sure I read everything that I want to read for the TBR and Beyond book group, as well as just personal reading and keeping up to date and doing any rereads for series that I love or that the next book is coming out of and yada, yada, yada. So this is my September TBR. It's going to be a couple books shorter than an average month just because my September month for work is insanely busy. So I there's going to be nights where I'm working instead of like being a normal adult. So I automatically just cut out Netlander books. I just don't think I'm going to have the time <laughs> to like take my time with something like that. So hopefully I can get back to that in November. But other than that, these are the books that I plan on at least attempting to read in the month of September. Starting off, I am so desperate to read Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian de Castell, so I cannot put it on any put it off any longer. This is the fourth and currently final book in the Great Coat series. Someone told me though that like Sebastian de Castell had made comments of like, oh well, maybe there'll be a spin-off series or something else, which I would love. But it follows this kind of ragtag group of former guards that are now like looked down upon because the people who they were guards for were like have been kind of wiped out and like besmirched so lots of political stuff lots of like sciencey magic poisoning kind of stuff and some romance and some gods and i'm just so excited i can't really summarize it. it's the fourth book in a series it's gonna spoil the other three i love this series it's gotten better and better and better with each book even though i freaking absolutely loved the first book so i didn't even know that that was possible if you haven't tried this series i would highly recommend it the first book is traitor's blade the covers are pretty cool too. I'm also actually pretty excited and I feel like it's a good time of year to try and read Devils Unto Dust by Emily Burquist. This is a dystopian set in, oh it says right at the beginning actually the year, hold on make sure I get the year right, 1877. But basically it's in like Texas and there's been essentially like a zombie outbreak and so people have just been kind of wiping out and there was also like a civil war which wiped out a lot of like the major cities and everything like that so it follows our main character who's essentially just taken on the parental role because her dad is MIA and she's caring for her younger siblings three younger siblings and she gets kind of suddenly you know they have a hard life as it is and then suddenly she gets told of like hey your father just stole hundreds of dollars from me you need, you know, need to go get it or we're going to kill you so zombie dodging while trying to find your absentee parents who stole money so i'm all for it here for it and the cover is just so freaking pretty and like i'm i've been in this mood for like dystopians not like the hunger games level dystopians but like dystopian historical fictiony stuff so i feel like this is gonna hit hit my current like irking of wanting to read something like that i also hope to finish the mark of athena well start and finish the mark of athena by rick riordan and this is the third book in the uh, Heroes of Olympus series, which is the one after Percy Jackson, I think. I'm slowly catching up on my Rick Riordan. He was big while I was in school, so I just didn't read any of his stuff. So I, I honestly just don't even read the summary of these series. I just know I'm going to enjoy. They're going to be light fun books. And I know that they're focusing on the Roman gods. And the last few books, it's been kind of coming up. Percy's world is merging with this other world, so the Greek and Roman gods are kind of combining, but they have cut themselves off for some reason from the world, and no one exactly seems to know quite why. So, just going to continue on that. I also then plan on reading Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire. I honestly keep forgetting which one is book two and which one is book three. I think this is two and three. I think they get, get gradually bigger. I think so. So I'm just planning on rereading the Throne of Glass series in preparation for Kingdom of Ash, the final book once again tier uh coming out then i also plan on getting to grace and fury this month by tracy banghart this is actually quite a small book which was part of my reason it's like a new book as well but it was it's quite small so i was like i feel like i could actually get through this in a night i don't remember the full summary off the top of my head even though i definitely hauled it this month and i think i read the inside of the dust jacket in one of my vlogs but it, there's two sisters and one's been groomed to have magical powers for the king but then the king takes a liking to her sister and the king is creepy or something like that I don't know. The back says she bounced on a precipice 
as windblown and perilous as a real cliff, there was a difference between defiance and outright rebellion. Could she do this? Could she jump over the ledge? Maybe not for herself, but for her sister, yes. So I'm all for this. This just sounds really cool, and it doesn't, like, it's not massive, and actually, I think it's not a standalone anymore. I think I saw it, but it's a series now. I've heard, like, pretty decent things about it, in all honesty. The people that I know that have read it seem to really like it, so I'm gonna give this one a go. I am also definitely planning on getting to Charmcaster this month by Sebastian de Castell. This is the third book in the YA series I was talking about before, uh, the Spellslinger series. P.S. If you live in Canada, they now carry them in Indigo in Canada. However, they changed the covers and they're horrible. Ah, no, sorry. I've seen worse, but they're very, very basic. So go or order off book depository and get them via there. It's just, the covers are better. Let's just be real. So this just is the third book and there's it's just magic and adventuring and questing. And it's just so good. The comedy is, is what really gets me in this, but the writing is so good. The dialogue is so, f so, it's just, it's funny, but it is good as well. The characters are awesome. Like there's the likable and the unlikable, but they're all just really well developed. And there's lots of like magic and creativity to it. And oh, it's just so good. I'm obsessed with this series so, so much. I'm so excited. I'm finally reading this one. And I think Soulbinder comes out in like two months or so, which is the fourth book. Oh, I'm so excited. I also plan on reading Sea Witch by Sarah Henning this month. This is one of the book reads for TBR and Beyond, um, but it, it looks kind of cool. I'm all for this like per pirate mermaid thing that's been happening trend-wise in YA. And yeah, I just know that there's supposed to be like mermaids involved, maybe a little bit of the Little Mermaid like retelling ask, but I feel like it's, someone told me it's quite dark. So I just... I knew that I was going to read it for the group, so I honestly haven't really read the summary all that much. <laughs> the link will be in the description if you really want the summary to go to the Goodreads page to read the summary. Also in the group TBR and Beyond, uh, they're doing like a buddy read of older series once in a while. So, I mean, this is really older. I mean, it's a couple years old now. But Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So I'm jumping in. I think Crooked Kingdom's not going to actually happen until October in the group, but I love this series so much. And I just know that I'm going to want to read them back to back. And also good time in because Six of Crows has a collector's edition coming out. So I want to reread it and just figure out if it's as good as I remember it being. And being like, yes, you should buy the collector's edition. Because you're obsessed with Leigh Bardugo. You have two different versions of the freaking Shadow and Bone series. Of course you need another edition of the other series. So, yeah. Six of Crows. Crooked Kingdom. Same world as Shadow and Bones and the Grishaverse. But different set of characters, and there's the heist, and there are drugs involved, and lots of magic, and lots of betrayal, and so much heart hurting, and so much cute heart hurting, and oh, it's just so good. So, I, and I love these covers, too. Every time I look at them, I notice, the first time I just noticed, like, the bird, like, the bird's wings. And then, like, the, like, a year and a half later, I was putting it on my shelf, I was like, oh my god, they're towers! And then I, like, immediately looked at Crooked Kingdom, and I was like... Oh, crap, yeah, I missed it, too. The bird, but there's also, like, the towers and the crown under you. Man, I was, like, absent-minded when I first read this series, but oh, I love these covers. I'm so excited to reread them. Then I am very, very eagerly, eagerly going to read Dare You to Lie by Amberlynn Natush. Uh, this is, I believe, another TBR and Beyond book read for the month of September. Can't remember. I was going to read it this month anyways. I think it is. And it's supposed to be, like, kind of inspired by Riverdale and Veronica Mars. I'm so excited about this the people that i know that got arcs really really enjoyed it and i'm all here for this veronica mars p.s side note there was like buzz like a week and a half or two weeks ago that hulu was trying to talk to kristen bell about doing a revival of veronica mars and i am so here for that i would watch kristen bell as like an 80 year old woman be veronica mars okay she's an amazing actress and that series is so freaking good and i can't believe it got canceled after only three seasons and the movie was good too oh, but yeah, so I mean, I know it's the first in a series. I know it's not massive. I know I like the author. She's cool on social media. I know I want to read it for the TBR and Brown book group. I know I enjoyed the first season of Riverdale, but just haven't gotten to the rest of them. I know I love Veronica Mars. This book is just hitting everything for me. I am also returning on this full train of trash for mass by reading Catwoman Soul Stealer this month. Part of the reason being I have to do for work a recommendation section session at our conference for YA and middle grade reads. And one of them that I'm doing is Catwoman Soul Stealer, but I feel like I should actually read it before suggesting it, even though like it's Catwoman, it's Sergei Mass. 
and it fits the trends I'm talking about. But nonetheless, I'm really excited about this. This is the last one of the series I'm going to read. I won't be buying the Superman um, Dawnbreaker one because the author has some problematic past, but I am just so excited about this. Oh, <gasps> and I just love Sarah J. Mass, and it always hurts my heart. And actually, once this is done, I guess next year I could like reread the trilogy, which I'm just going to always keep referring to this as a trilogy, BTS. Not BTS. Oh my God. They've in invaded my brain. BTW, not BTS. Oh my good Lord. Send help. I am basically almost all ready now because I read Stocking Jack the Ripper last month. I'm rereading Hunting Prince Dracula this month. And then I will be ready for when my copy of Escaping from Houdini shows up. Just picks up where Stocking Jack the Ripper left off, where Audrey Rose and her BFF slash almost boyfriend Thomas are heading to... Oh, I can't remember the name of the school. Does it say? It doesn't say the specific school. I thought it always did. But they're going to Romania where her father has allowed her to go and pursue... Um, you know, mortology or whatever the heck the thing is, you know, m medical investigation and death and whatever her father or her uncle was. And Thomas is going along with her, which is always fun. But it's supposed to be like a Vlad, um, not Vlad, is it? No, Dracula kind of vibey retelling -y kind of thing. And I loved this book so much. Also on this massive train of rereads, I am also going to reread Spindlefire by Lexa Hillier. P.S. This is like weird. I, I'm this is a book that confuses me like immensely with Goodreads. There were even to this day I feel like very few ratings of this book and they were like very, very weirdly like negative, even though I was like read this and I was like, what are you all talking about? I freaking loved this book. And then I talked to people in groups and they're like, I've been thinking the same thing. Okay, it's not just me. Then what? So this is like a Sleeping Beauty retelling, but it's honestly kind of darker. <laughs> and it's been probably like a year and a half since I read it. And I own the sequel now that came out Winter Glass. And I just wanted, I wanted to read Winter Glass so badly, but I honestly just didn't remember an awful lot from Spindlefire because it just felt like so long ago and I read too many books. So I'm just going to read reread this I know that there's the sisters and one of them is blind and then there's there's a romance thrown in and there's like some betrayal kind of things that kind of weave in and I really enjoyed it the first time so I'm hoping I'll enjoy it just as much second time and we'll remember enough so that next month I can read winter class then I am so excited to get to dance of thieves this month by Mary Pearson look at the cover so this is set in the world of the Remnant Chronicles series, which is one of my all-time favorite series or trilogies, and it's just a different time period, and it sounds like just as dark of a world. I'm curious if it's supposed to be in the future or the past of the Remnant Chronicles. I think someone told me it was supposed to be the future, which is sad because apparently they did not learn a lot of lessons from what happened in the Remnant Chronicles. But that is basically like human history 101. We do that continuously. This whole world essentially revolves around this very authoritarian from the sounds of it uh ruling family and for whatever reason there are knights sent in to investigate some geographic area and i think the knight and one of the like the ruling kingdom me peoples starts interacting i know that's such a really bad vague description but i don't want to read the summary i'm just super excited for this i read the summary of it i think in my vlog or once again It'll be linked in the description down below. So oh, it's just so pretty. And I reread The Remnant Chronicles earlier this year, actually. So I think in preparation for this. So I am ready. My body is ready. And lastly, this month, I am definitely getting to these Rebel Waves. Sarah Rash is one of my favorite authors. And I just need to get to this. And it fits into one of the like challenges of pirates, ships, and sirens or something like that in the TBR Beyond group. And my friend Meg read the arc and freaking loved it. I've oh, I've had the arc for, geez, I think I got it in February at a conference. Oh my good lord. And I just never got to it. So, reading this baby this month. I know that it's like, there's our pirates, but my friend was like, it was really good, but it was more political than I thought it was going to be. And there was a lot less focus on like it being piratey. Like it's not Daughter of the Pirate King kind of stuff, which I am A-OK -okay with. I absolutely love Snow Like Ashes and... I'm just so excited to read this. There's supposed to be a pirate, a soldier, and something else. And a heretic. And there's supposed to be LGBT rep in here as well, which is always great. So I'm just so excited. So those are all the books that I plan on reading in the month of September. If I can squeeze it in, I don't think I will be able to. If I can, though, I will try and get on to the next book in Outlander. So make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages, and I will link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you.